we have a massive tornado on the ground. This is a massive, massive tornado. Seven days ago, the Tennessee Valley was ground zero for the country's deadliest tornado outbreak in more than 85 years. We have a tornado on the ground right now near Tony, near Harvest, moving towards Brown's Corner. Now the valley is united like never before with neighbors helping neighbors. And as cleanup continues, more incredible stories of survival and loss come to light. This is April's Fury one week later. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Guy Hornbuckle. And I'm Melissa Riaka. Thank you for watching this special three hour edition of Way 31 First News, April's Fury, one week later. Over the next three hours, we'll be bringing you stories from across North Alabama stories of loss, stories of heartbreak, stories of resilience, and stories of hope. Now, these stories come from all over the valley, from the Shoals to Sand Mountain and dozens of communities in between. We realize many of you have been without power for the past week, and this is your first chance to see the true scope of what happened seven days ago. Around the state, 236 people are confirmed dead, more than a half of those in North Alabama. In Marion County, the town of Hackleburg was leveled by the first EF5 tornado to strike Alabama in more than a decade. 29 lives were lost, and many are still unaccounted for in the town of just 1,600. The small town of Phil Campbell was struck moments later by the same EFI tornado that struck Hackleburg. 28 more lives were lost in Franklin County from that storm. There is also tremendous devastation in Coleman County, which was hit by two waves, one in the morning, the second, and EF4 in the afternoon. Two people were killed there. Four people were killed when the storms made their way into Limestone County. Entire neighborhoods were leveled east of Athens. And in Lawrence County, 14 more lives were lost as a twister tore through Mount Hope and Hillsboro. Way 31 has in-depth reports from all of these areas and more over the next three hours. And around 5.40 Wednesday, the storm that tore through Limestone County struck the Browns Ferry nuclear plant there. Power lines and towers feeding out of the plant were badly damaged and power to most of North Alabama was suddenly cut. As many as 500,000 households were in the dark. Some are still without power today. However, as of this morning, about 90 to 95 percent of Huntsville Utilities customers have had their power restored. In DeKalb and Marshall counties, the towns of Rainsville, Sylvania, Arab, and Gunnersville all found themselves in the path of an EF4 tornado. 33 people were killed in DeKalb County alone, the most of any one county in North Alabama. Way 31's Mallory Hoff is live in Sylvania with more. Mallory. Right, certainly one of the hardest hit areas in North Alabama. Just like you said, 33 confirmed dead here in DeKalb County today. One week after that tornado came through, all other residents in DeKalb County are accounted for. An EF4 tornado ripped through this area, ripping homes from their foundations, plucking trees off of the ground. 175 mile per hour winds here. Just to give you an idea of how bad and widespread the destruction really was 200 homes here in DeKalb County considered a total loss, 1,000 with some type of partial damage. Earlier today, we spoke with a husband and wife who say they survived this storm but lost their home, but they survived thanks to a text message sent to them by their kids asking them to join them down the street to take cover. They say if it was not for that text message, they may not have been with us today to tell their story. Tell me, when you came back to the home and you saw this, what was going through your mind? Uh, just, just everything. I was just thanking the Lord that we was all, all, all right, that it could have been us and our found dead. But I was just thankful God, we can rebuild and go from scratch, but our lives is most important. You found your dog a little while later. You didn't know if he had survived or not. No, ma'am. He was up in the woods and his... Uh, dog house is pinned and we thought we kept calling, kept calling him. He never would answer. And Saturday afternoon we come back down here and he was over there in the corner of the house. Uh, just He was scared at first but then he realized it was us and now he's just a happy little dog. 
certainly an incredible story of survival. Uh, tonight, something EMA officials want to get out there to the community. Does not matter if you lost a window or you lost your entire home. As a result of these tornadoes, you need to register with FEMA. You need to register with the Red Cross. Until you do so, officials cannot get the help that's needed out to this area. In order to do that, you can contact your local EMA, and they will, of course, direct you from there. For now, live in DeKalb County, Mallory Hoff, Way 31 First News. All right, thank you, Mallory. There were three major waves of storms that came through the valley on April the 27th, spawning more than two dozen tornadoes. The outbreak began early in the morning and continued through the evening hours. Some of the first deaths occurred in Coleman County around 7 a.m., but an even stronger storm would hit downtown Coleman that afternoon. Way 31 Chief Meteorologist Brad Huffines is standing by with more details on that storm. Brad? Well, these tornadoes came across the valley for the next three hours. About once an hour, we're going to highlight some of the strongest, the EF4s and EF5s that affected the Tennessee Valley. And this hour, we're going to highlight the storms in Coleman County. Storm Force 31 Viper Max has a look at what these storms look like as they were coming across the Tennessee Valley. This is what a radar full of EF zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives looks like through the afternoon hours that day. An amazing picture of tornado after tornado after tornado. On Storm Force 31 Omnimax, I'm tracking first off the Numbers of tornadoes you see on the screen there, the EF5, the purple line across North Alabama. We'll talk about that more next hour. All right, thank you, Brad. Well, even before the storms had passed, we began getting pictures and videos from you, our viewers. Our My Way page on WayTV.com has exploded over the past week with your stories from the field. Way 31's Rebecca Schlein has a look at some of the pictures that you've sent us. Rebecca? That's right. You, our viewers, have sent us dozens of photos well before the last tornadoes tore through North Alabama, and then you continue to send them throughout the damage assessments and recovery efforts of the past week. Now take a look at this photo taken in ARAB. The sender writes, I was in the Walmart when this came through. I didn't realize how blessed I am until I saw this. And Mary Frank sent this photo of golf ball-sized hail in Athens, also taken the day of the storm. And as you can see here, an uprooted tree fell on a home in Henniger in DeKalb County. This photo, taken the day of the storms, shows severe damage to Riverside Christian Academy in Lincoln County, Tennessee. And this last photo was taken by Patrick Hines and Phil Campbell. As you can see here, much of the Franklin County town was leveled by the EF5 tornado that tore through. And to see more, more of these pictures or upload some of your own, go to the My Way section of WayTV.com. You can also send us your pictures via email and from your phone to pics at waytv.com. Stay tuned to see more of the photos you sent as we continue our special coverage of the aftermath of these terrible storms. All right, last week was a baptism by fire for a meteorologist in charge of the National Weather Service office in Huntsville. Chris Darden took that position just a couple of days before the storms struck, and he joins us live on the set now along with our own meteorologist, Chris Davis. This had to be an extraordinary day for the National Weather Service office last Wednesday, Chris. Well, certainly I think it's an unprecedented situation. Um, a lot of people will compare this to the April 3rd, 74 outbreak. We won't know for days or maybe weeks to come, you know, how it compares. But um, in terms of the, you know, number of fatalities, unfortunately, you know, it's already exceeded that. And, and it's probably going to, you know, go down as probably the biggest outbreak since 1936. And another indication as to just how severe it was, you guys had to vacate yourself at one point. Right. As one of the storms uh, moved through Madison and approached the uh, Huntsville area, we already had confirmation that the tornado was on the ground and producing quite a bit of damage. And as our policy uh, is in place, uh, we call our sister office in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, they take over, and then we uh, take a shelter in place until the, uh, until the threat is passed. Tell us about some of the stats. How many warnings did you issue? It's probably an astronomical number for us out there. Well, uh, we haven't gone back and looked at previous years, but we issued 92 tornado warnings in about a 16-hour period. And 92 warnings is more than uh, more warnings than we've issued in several years uh, since the office opened in 2003. Um, our average lead time before the first tornado touchdown uh, was about 19 minutes. Devastation, pain, triumph. April's fury. One week later. DeKalb County neighbors are helping neighbors in the cleanup process. 
And in some places, even jail inmates have been recruited to help with the effort. Boy 31's Tim Reed joins us live from Sylvania in DeKalb County with more. Tim? This used to be someone's house in DeKalb County. It's one of many here that was destroyed by a tornado. 33 people lost their lives one week ago in this county. But despite the destruction and loss of life, there has been an outpouring of goodwill to help victims. Dozens of inmates from the DeKalb County Detention Center are part of the effort here to help those in need. The prisoners are helping by handing out food and water at the distribution center in Rainsville. We're probably working about 30 or 35 of those. Those are our, uh, those are our trustees that we work every day. Uh, they really get a blessing out of coming out here and doing something like this. They really feel good about being here with us and helping us and helping the folks. When they pull up, the, the elderly folks, we, we carry it to their car, whatever they want. So. The Sheriff's Distribution Center is located on Highway 75 in Rainsville. Supplies such as canned goods and clothing have been donated and brought here from Michigan, Colorado, and Arizona, to name a few. So reporting live in DeKalb County, I'm Tim Reed, Way 31 First News. Back to you. All right, thank you, Tim. Way 31's own Gary Dobbs is one of the thousands of people affected by this storm. As you may recall, Gary was actually on the phone with us live as the storm barreled down on his home in Mount Hope. Here's what it sounded like. The roar. Hang on a minute. All right, we're, we're listening. We're just going to... Hang on, hang on. Yes, I see a, I see a definite debris uh, area. All right, uh, this again... As a matter of fact, it looks like it's coming straight this direction. Gary it Dobbs... may miss me just to the south. Gary Dobbs live on the phone uh, right now at Mount Hope seeing a debris cloud. We're going we're gonna to keep you up, Gary, uh, if, if you don't... It, it, uh, Brad, this, Brad, this looks like a... <clears throat> if I had to judge what this is, it looks like an F4. And I am going to have to go inside. Uh, Gary Dobbs right now seeking shelter in his uh, storm shelter right now. You can now. hear the wind picking up. It is picked up and it is. Well, I got to go inside, okay? Uh, Gary Dobbs heading into his storm shelter and his cell phone just cut off there. Moments later, Gary's home was gone. We here at Way 31 did not hear from him again until hours later when we learned he was in a Florence hospital. And Gary joins us now live from his home in Mount Hope with Way 31's Chase Gallimore. Gary, uh, what was it like hearing that tape, or is he with you right now, Chase? Could you just ask that question of him? Yes, sir, Guy. He's uh, standing right here by, beside me. Gary, uh, he just asked you uh, what it was like to experience uh, that tornado. Well, now, that's a good question, to try to come up with the proper words. I, it's, it's indescribable. It's, uh, I've never felt that kind of fury of wind and that, that kind of power and that, that, uh, just that force. Uh, and I think everything on this side of Lawrence County either hit me in the back or in the front, uh, but before it was all over, I was being pounded as, uh, as I ran back through the house here and uh, tried to get to the other end of the house where the storm shelter was located, but didn't quite make it there. See, Gary, and uh, listening to that audio of the, that phone conversation of while the tornado was coming through and then looking uh, behind us and uh, seeing what's left of your home here, uh, it's amazing that you're even standing here with us, but uh, I want you to just uh, kind of take us through those moments that we were hearing in that phone conversation as you looked over the hill and, and you saw that uh, tornado coming at us. All right, uh, right, uh, right back over here to the southwest is, of course, where it was coming to, to, to me from. And... Uh, what got my attention to start with first, uh, as soon as I got home, and I've only been home about 15 minutes and as soon as I, from, from being at the TV station, and as soon as I got here, I turned on the, flipped on the TV, and uh, Brad was talking about uh, a, a tornado in Phil Campbell, which is exactly southwest from here, and uh, he said that uh, it registered a 10 on the, uh, the uh, tornado scale index. And, uh, of course, we've, we've never seen a 10 before around here on the index. Uh, we've seen some 8s and 9s, but a 10. So I knew it was a powerful storm, and I knew it was heading this way. So I thought it would be a, a, a good idea to, to serve then as a on-the-ground reporter or, or a storm spotter, if you will, and to, to uh, hopefully describe to our listeners and viewers uh, exactly what was happening right here in Mount Hope and uh, give the folks downwind, you know, down to the to the northeast of me here, some idea what they might expect. So I'm standing here. I come out here on the porch. First thing was the vivid lightning. This whole sky was just covered with just uh, indescribable uh, lightning. The intensity and the frequency of the lightning was just, I've never seen anything like it. And then hail was falling right here in the front yard during the whole time I was out here talking on the air. 
And uh, but the, the the eerie thing was the wind was absolutely calm. These trees over here, the former pecan trees up front here, uh, were just they were still. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of my report. Uh, as I was watching the tornado, which looked like it may veer and just miss me to the south there, all of a sudden it turned straight at me and the winds went from zero to, I'd estimate, 100 miles an hour in just two or three seconds because the limbs on these pecan trees immediately started snapping right off. Well, that's when I think the last thing I said was, it's coming right at me, I gotta go. So I threw the phone down right here and uh, took off into the house. The front door was right, right over here. Uh, and I went in there and I went around over to the bedroom over there and I was heading into the uh, living, the family room, which is back over that area. And uh, my plan was to go out the back door and on the deck and go right down into the storm shelter, which was right there real close to the, uh, to the, through that door on the back. But the uh, problem was, as I turned around, as I was running, I turned around and looked, this front part of the house was already coming apart. And the walls were ex on the uh, east side over here were exploding outward. This uh, wall facing to the uh, south was exploding outward. And, uh, and I could hear my car over here was on the roof. I could hear that. And some of these trees, trunks, and that big t utility pole right there were just slamming into the house. I could hear all that. So my thinking was I, I didn't have time to go back outside to get in the storm shelter. So I just ducked in the closet back over there in the corner. And uh, that's the northeastern corner. And uh, that would be the last place hit by the tornado. I knew that. So I was, I was hoping that uh, a lot of this debris would have passed over me before I, before I got thrown out into it. And that's exactly what happened. I, it sucked me right the floor out from under me and sucked me with it. And I went up and over the storm pit back there and then w wound up in the yard and uh, then debris just piling up all around me. And I was, like I said, hit by, I don't know what all of it. I think the washer and dryer both glanced a, a glancing blow. It uh, cracked my ribs, bruised my lung, and all that kind of thing. And I've got, I'm black and blue all over. And I spent most of my time just like this right here with, uh, that's, that's all I could think to do was protect my head with my arms. And as a result, both sides of my arms are pure black and blue. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, People say that uh, somebody was with me on that little jaunt, and I have to, I have to believe that. I, I do believe that, absolutely. And certainly looking through here and, and just knowing what you've been through. Like you see, it was almost a scene like out of a movie uh, as you were running through and, and watching the, the house fall apart behind you. You're already a TV star, so now I think we can uh, classify you as a superhero, uh, something <laughs> like that. Can you update us on your condition now of how you're feeling? I'm still sore. I'm, I'm pretty sorry. It only hurts to breathe <laughs> but, sure. or laugh. But uh, So we better not do that too much, right? <laughs> but no, I just cracked a few ribs and I bruised my lung right here. Other than that, I've got some pretty serious bruises that kind of went internally a little bit. It. But uh, uh, after they did the CT scans and everything, uh, I, I had no internal injuries other than bruising, no no ripping or bleeding or anything like that. So I was very fortunate, you know, to be able to get through this uh, as unscathed as I was. Uh, I would say so. And uh, like I say, just uh, looking at things in here, we're we're so blessed to have you back and uh, ready to go. When are you uh, expected to be back on the air on the morning show? Uh, probably Friday morning is what it's looking right now. So uh, I wanted to get back before the week was out, and, and it looks like Friday morning is, is the plan. Okay, well, thank you so much, Gary. And we will have more with uh, Gary Dobbs here at his home, or what was his home here in the Mount Hope area in Lawrence County uh, in the uh, third hour of our show, the 6 o'clock hour. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll hear more about Gary's story of how he survived this uh, incredible storm that, uh, that passed through in Lawrence County. We're live in Mount Hope. Chase Gallimore, Way 31, First News. All right, Chase, thanks to you and Gary, of course. Well, these storms brought back a lot of memories for longtime Tennessee Valley residents. Images of 1974 and 1989 came flooding back for a lot of folks. And that includes another Huntsville broadcasting icon, someone who worked alongside Gary Dobbs for many years. We're talking about Adrian Gibson, and he's standing by live with TW Star, I believe. And TW, I hope he will forgive the way I was trying to emulate that signature way in which he always said his name. Adrian Gibson, I remember it so well. 
I'm sure he will, Guy. We'll talk with Adrian in just a moment. I wanted to show you a couple things here in the Anderson Hills community, North Madison County. First of all, this house behind me. This particular house was hit twice in 1995, May of 1995, when uh, Anderson Hills experienced a tornado that came through here. So the second time it came through, this house got hit again, completely flattened off the top of that house, just sheared right off. And something else that really caught my eye a little bit earlier, photographer Josh pointed this out. Check out this. Kind of looks like a, a support beam. Uh, uh, for a house. This thing, I mean, it is in there. You can't pull it out. You can't move it. There's no telling how deep that is in the ground, maybe three or four feet in the ground. That just shows you the force and the velocity of the winds that came through here in, Mad in North Madison County. And speaking of uh, Adrian Gibson, he joins us now live. And Adrian, you've seen a lot of these things. We talked a little bit about the one that came through here in 1994. You also covered the super outbreak in 1974. 74. You've been looking around here. What do you think? I have never seen quite as widespread as what we're seeing here, of course, is a great concentration of structures for that uh, could uh, be torn asunder. Uh, I live in DeKalb County now, and I am only seven miles from where the tornado went through at Rainsville and got the Coliseum and schoolhouse there. And then further north, there is as much, or if not more, total destruction there than what we're seeing here, because these structures, excuse me, uh, seem to be better built, and it's mainly the mm -hmm. upper floors that are gone. Whereas in the DeKalb County storms, you're lucky to see a, a slab where a house was, or even a lot that you could tell there was a house here, and it was so wide at the base, and the winds were so strong, it's just total destruction there. But yes. I've seen a few of them, T.J. Oh, yeah. You've been doing this for a long time. Uh, 34 years. You did news. You did weather. Right. Where, where were you when the storms were coming through a week from today? Hard to believe when you look at this weather. It was this time last week when this was going on. Where were you and how were you watching the storms? We were, we were <laughs> headed for the storm cellar. I have a very strong structure available to there. us at our house. And we had visitors from Florida as well as North Carolina here at the same time. So we all gathered in that uh, storm cellar. Shelter shelter had already lost power and uh, that's where we weathered the storm and no problems at all in Fort Payne proper. All right, tell us a little bit about 1974. They call it the, the super outbreak, and you were all over that one. We were uh, on the air. I was one of the news anchors in 74 at Channel 31, and we were on the air during the 6 o'clock newscast when the first ones hit in De uh, Madison County. Uh, luckily, Channel 31 at that time had a weather radar. We were the only station in the state of Alabama to have one at the time. It was an old, antiquated one, one of those where the cursor goes around and it flashes and then decays and flashes and decays. But as a result of the intensity of the storms that developed after we started following them, I am convinced that if ever I had a hand in maybe helping to save somebody's life, it was that night. Wow. Because uh, after the first ones hit and we began tracking them on that radar, made all the difference in the world of oh, the yeah. number of fatalities and even injuries that were associated with it. Uh, a proud day. Oh yeah, and the technology is just in, oh yeah. yeah, and the technology has just improved since then. Oh, so imagine the technology that has improved that's had to have saved so many lives uh, this time around. Well, think about this too, TW. Back then we did not have as much advanced notice as right. we do now, not with our satellites and uh, all of the Dopplers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Technology has advanced so much in that time frame. We had a lead time of two and three days advising us that the these storms were potentially mm -hmm. going to occur, that a system that was capable of producing them was on the way. Folks, and, and Brad, bless his heart, <laughs> he'd uh, tell people constantly, folks, stay weather aware. Mm -hmm. Watch it. Yeah. Listen. Be advised. Yeah. Get all the help you can get as far as knowing where they are. Radars of today, capable of doing just that. And the only thing I can say is, folks, listen to your weatherman. Oh, yeah. Adrian Gibson, thank you so much. Pleasure thank to you. see you. All right. Always good to see you. Right. Also, guys, just one more note on this house. Just talk to the homeowner. Like I said, this, they went through the uh, tornado in 1995. They went through this one. They are not going to rebuild. Back to you in the studio. We have a massive tornado on the ground. This is a massive, massive tornado.
Seven days ago, the Tennessee Valley was ground zero for the country's deadliest tornado outbreak in more than 85 years. We have a tornado on the ground right now near Tony, near Harvest, moving towards Brown's Corner. Now the valley is united like never before with neighbors helping neighbors. And as cleanup continues, more incredible stories of survival and loss come to light. This is April's Fury one week later. TW and I uh, work with uh, Chad Rose. He is our morning producer at Way 31. His house is nothing but a pile of rubble, and you had the opportunity to go out there and talk with him. Yeah, so many people have been affected by these storms across the Tennessee Valley. We at the uh, Way 31 family, we are not immune. We had uh, we talked about Gary Dobbs mm -hmm. and, of course, our morning producer, Chad Rose. I got to spend some time with Chad a little bit earlier this week. Here's his story. Through my son, he's his tenth birthday was Wednesday. Turned ten on Wednesday. Like so many across the Tennessee Valley, the last several days have been an emotional time for Chad Rose and his family. The first things that I thought of when I saw my house, I can't say right now. But a couple seconds later, the first thing I thought of was my neighbors. Because I knew I had made it out. The Rose family lived here in East Limestone for about six years. During that time, multiple storms came through this area. They never left this house. This time, this one time, they left just 30 minutes before the tornado hit. Thank God that my wife saw some footage of uh, the Coleman tornado around 4 o'clock. About 30 minutes later, disaster struck Camden Court. Amazingly, there were no fatalities in this neighborhood. Where we would like to hang out during a storm that we thought would be a safe place was right here. This was the laundry room. We would huddle, huddle around our couch cushions and pillows and there was a wall here and here was the washer and dryer. And I cannot tell you where the washer and dryer are. But thankfully, we can tell you that Chad and his family are here with us, survivors. In East Limestone County, TW Star, Way 31, First News. And we would like to give you an update on Chad. He did come back to work this morning. We were very happy to have him back at the uh, Way 31 office. He, he was there for a while, kind of put together our morning newscast, and then he went home. And we're kind of glad about that. He came in, did a little bit of work, hopefully got his mind off it a little bit, although he was doing a lot of tornado coverage. And then he went home and hopefully got some sleep and spent some time with his family. Hopefully we'll be seeing a little bit more of Chad over the coming. All right, thank you, Tim. And uh, I think that those images of people helping each other in the greatest time of need are something that we are all going to remember about these devastating storms. It is absolutely remarkable the way the entire community has risen to take care of each other. Let me ask one question too of people that uh, may have gotten tired of getting in shelter and having a tornado not hit over and over again. When we see what has just happened in our community, how many times is too many times to seek shelter after seeing something like this? I would hope that everyone that's there, even the people that are watching that ignored the warnings, because I'm sure a lot of you did. I've heard from some of you, one that we had earlier from, from contacted Weather Call. Remember, it takes one time like this to make that seeking shelter worth it. Please take it seriously every single time it's worth it. And very quickly, we want to share with you, for those of you who have enjoyed this program, coming up tonight on Way 31 First News at 10, we'll tell you how you will be able to get a DVD copy of this entire program. All the proceeds from the sale of those DVDs will go to the effort. Thank you to all the volunteers. Thank you for allowing us to keep you informed during this crisis. And thank you for watching April's Fury one week later. Thank you. Be safe.